Okay, it's time for another installment of the Crazy Gypsy Caravan project. So in this episode, we're going to look at the finished roof, uh, as I promised last time. So let me flip the camera around so you can stop looking at what you're interested in, which is this right here. And as you can see, I've got the roof finished, uh, canvas, vinyl, stretched over the top with some uh, laminate. And I've got my fan installed as well. I haven't finished the side trim yet, but um, let me show you what I've got for the roof. So last time we had the headliner material in uh, over the laminated beams. And um, after that, I put uh, under, under here inside, I put two layers of um, insulation so it's an inch it's an inch gap but i use two thicknesses of um foil backed one of them is reflectix the one that's on the top which is like a bubble wrap with foil on both sides and the bottom one is more like um an actual insulation that's kind of a half inch so it's about three quarters of an inch of insulation with a uh, quarter inch air gap um, which the reflectix is supposed to have a little bit of an air gap for it to work best but i as soon as i put that on the temperature inside dropped like 20 degrees it made a huge difference from you know the sun's really hot at summer so um, that really dropped the temperature inside already and then i uh put over that i'll show you here there's, there's two two layers of fabric um this first layer that i put put on is like a kind of a Gore-Tex type. It's like an awning fabric, but it's what they use for like backpacks and stuff. So it's like 600 threads per inch, uh, very tight weave um, with a, the underside's got like a uh, kind of a rubber infused rubber neoprene sealant like backpacks and, and you know, kind of some luggage and stuff does. That's what I put on first. And I could have just stuck with that. It's pretty light um, and uh, but it's like a, it's more of a fabric, and and so I found this. Um, this is a marine vinyl. Um, here, I'm gonna move around to the other side here, so you can see, or at least I can see a little better again. Uh, and I've trimmed this off the back here, um, and I'll do that in the front, and I'll I'll probably trim just inside this black line here, and uh, I need to make some uh, custom wood like I did on the inside of the, the door um, the arch door I'll, I'll make some some nice trim uh, to cover that edge um, and you can see I've started I've just started putting um, the side trim on on here uh, the front and whatnot so that covers you know that covers that um, edge where it folds over and then that's covered over with the um, this is this is red oak uh, incidentally for anybody who's interested this is quarter inch by two inch red oak uh, which of course is really only f f like three sixteenths five millimeters by one and a little over a half or something you know once it's milled down um, but it's a really nice a hard hard wood um, but bendable so I was able to use it you know for these uh, arches over the top um the last stuff i used inside is more like a pine but this stuff is for the exterior i wanted a nice hardwood so i found this really cool it's really pretty this this red oak uh, and i and i've stained it with um dark walnut danish oil the watt code dark uh, walnut Danish oil and then um, which is all I've done on the bottom stuff and of course for the for the corner sections where the lift rubs I did that's all I wanted was the Danish oil because it's nice kind of slippery but then for the top part and the exterior I'm going to do well this part I've already done the rest I haven't put but I'm going to put polyurethane so this has got a coat of polyurethane over the top of that because it'll be exposed to um, more you know weather and moisture and whatnot the side trim, I've only just put the Danish oil on, but I'll brush on a coat of polyurethane uh, when I get around to it. Um, so back to this, this, so this is this is this um, Naga hide kind of a, it's a marine vinyl, uh, what they use for boat upholstery or for boat covers and stuff. And it's, you know, sort of stretchy. It's got a little leather kind of, uh, you know, grain texture to it. And it's really thick and, and uh, completely impervious to water so uh so with two layers of that 
on there. Um, there's basically no wa way water is going to get through. Now my seams for, for the the canvas or the underside, uh, the the underneath part of the canvas that came in a 60 inch width, um, and that put a seam right in the center perfectly. So there's one seam on the underside, you know, with a single piece running, you know, over each section. And I put underneath the first one, I put a bead of uh, Gorilla Glue uh, construction adhesive. And then over the top of that, then another bead when I put the second layer on and I uh, overlap the front one over the back so that you know the water be you know moving down the road or whatever will be going that way um, but it's it's sealed and then so that's one seam and then the marine vinyl only came in a 54 inch width so there's two seams on that and there's one so there's one seam here and one seam here um, and I did the same thing with that except instead of using uh, Gorilla Glue I used a Loctite construction adhesive um mostly because i ran out of gorilla glue but the loctite tends to expand a little bit which is kind of cool uh it's a little harder to work with um but it seals in the gaps really nice so so anyway there's there's technically three seams but they're offset so there's one seam underneath here and then a single piece over the top that runs up to here so that seam is actually covered over and then there's the two other seams and then of course as you can see i put uh pieces of that red oak uh over the top of that and of course there's a bead of um there's a bead of silicone uh that well the loctite um sealant underneath each one of those uh, I only screwed down for, for these uh, these pieces here I only put a screw in each end and the rest of it is just uh, held by construction adhesive it's not going to go anywhere and it doesn't really serve any uh, serious purpose the um, I mean it's structurally sound anyway um, the as you can see there's just a you know you can see the seam there in the gap there's just a little seam right there um that's sealed anyway and then with an additional seam uh, uh, uh sealant uh bead of sealant there's really no way i mean this is the, the whole point a reason i i mean it looks this curved roof looks cool anyway but the real function of this curved roof is that there's no way for water to get through it it's there's no place water can puddle or pool like on a flat roof on a regular rv you know, and each of these, um, each of these beams, you know, creates a little, with, this is stretchy, this, like I said, this, this stuff is stretchy, so you can see that it's got a little bit of a trough in between each, which creates a channel for the water, so there's just absolutely no place where the water could possibly pool up, it could pour down rain, and there's no water ever going to get in, um, I mean, I, assuming I didn't poke a hole in it anywhere <laughs> but even if the branch was to poke through this stuff you know the, there would be very little water would come through because most of it would just run off and you might get a drip or two here or there and you could patch it at any rate that was that was the main f sort of functional reason why I went with an arched roof plus like I say it just kind of looks cool and I'm going with this gypsy caravan kind of a uh, theme here modern tech technology version um so let's go up on the top here and I'll show you uh, if I can get up on my step stool. So I've got this, uh, this is a fantastic fan. It's a really awesome fan. And so structurally, I just wanted to show you what I've got here is um, a little housing that I built around and it's curved uh, to, to match the, uh, the curve of the roof on the front and the back. And then, you know, just, you know, straight on the sides, just out of, you know, uh, two by two. And then I, when I screwed that down, uh, there's a frame underneath inside, I put a bead of that um, Loctite underneath uh, of the housing and screwed it down. And then once that was screwed down and sealed, I put an additional bead of that. This is just lap seal at the white stuff, just like you put around in, you know, windows or in a bathroom shower or whatever. Um, so that's a, an additional um sealant around the edge of that and then if you see between the fan and the housing there's a black strip that's butyl tape like you use on uh windows which i'll use on when i put my windows in i've got a bunch of that um so it's like a soft 
putty type of a stuff so and so I screwed down the fan on top of that um, so I'm gonna go let's see oh, as you can see let me get up here climb on top of my tongue here and maybe give you a different view of from up here you can see the fan and um, so this fan has got well, I'll just show you, you can see the screws like a bunch of screws all around the top there and, and again like I said the um, adhesive but let's go inside and I'll show you let me pull the roof up here and I'll, let me just punch it up to about three and I'll climb in and uh, and while we're watching this go up, I'll show you. Those are the lifts in the corners, right? There's each each corner has one of these lifts, and I hadn't given you a lot of information about that. Somebody asked in the comments of the a post or two ago. I put a bunch of information about what these lifts actually are, but I got these from Progressive Automation. They are 30-inch lifts, which is really more than I needed. 25 probably would have been fine, but um, they. Each lift 400 pounds, so there's four of them, so it's got 1,600 pounds of lift, and my roof's gonna come in at under 500 pounds, probably total, including the four windows are 25 pounds each, that's 100 pounds, six solar panels at 20 pounds each, that's 120 pounds, so there's 220 right there, but the rest of it is just the wood. Um, it's got the fiberglass, or the uh, foamular insulation, um, and not a lot, there's not a lot else. So I mean, it's it's probably maybe 400, maybe 500 pounds, something like that. Okay, and as you can see, I'm actually painting. I decided I didn't really like the wood under here. So I've got this all taped off and I'm painting this white, the same color as the wall. Um, I got one coat, I need to do a second coat on there. Um, <clears throat> the stain didn't really take too well to that. Um, just quarter inch common, you know, wood uh, one by eight I think that is um, so uh, well you can see like the you know the inside of that it's just this you know basic I'll put a um, you know some contact paper or something in there but it's just sort of that's cheap not real great wood but um, but you know surface function is sturdy and I just need something strong that the lifts could push up against so anyway so let me get back here and you can look at the fan from the inside so that's where I put the fan in between these um, two beams that are right straight up from the door and there's those um, arch pieces here I was talking about um, where I'll just you know same same thing on the outside uh, not as uh, steep of a curve obviously but anyway this is the fantastic fan and this particular model is kind of like the, the best one they made I, I got I wanted all the cool features so this thing has actually got an auto, it's remote control for st starters. It's actually remote control. You can manually open it um, just by turning that. Um, but it's also got um, a rain sensor in it, and the the I mean, so you can open the um, the, the lid up there. I don't know if you can see or not. Let me uh, let's see if I can turn it the right way. It'll probably help. Yeah, okay, let's just lift that up there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that the sun coming in, but. Anyway, so I haven't got the electricity hooked up yet. The electricity goes through. You can see, like, I had to cut out a little piece right there where the power wire goes down and it comes down. You know, I put it, it comes out in my cabinet right now. I ran it down underneath. Uh, it's inside the, between the two layers of um, the headliner and runs along the side down here uh, and goes along where that, you know, that same conduit that I showed you and it comes out in here. So then I'll run that, you know, into the curly cord. Like I said, it'll come down here and it'll go down into where my batteries and stuff are. <clears throat> but right now it's manual method. So anyway, so the, the, the lid opens and it's got this kind of nice bluish see-through lid. But anyway, there's a, uh, oops, there's a um, automatic sensor, rain sensor in it. So if it start, if it's open and it starts to rain, the lid will automatically close and it's got a thermostat so it'll automatically turn on and off depending on what you're you set the thermo thermostat at that's on the remote, remote control this is a four amp fuse right here um and uh the speed and stuff you know you can change the speed and all that but uh, the main thing i wanted was the rain sensor i thought was pretty cool and then of course the thermostat is really nice so if it gets up to a particular temperature um it'll just kick on um i don't think that the top automatically opens it might when the thermostat 
turns it on. I have to, I haven't turned I haven't checked it yet, so I'll have to I'll have to check that. But anyway, that's the fantastic fan, and and basically I just you know I put a a little uh, cross brace on either side here across this, and then um, I was gonna cut a piece of like a little curved piece, but that's you know curved piece to fit in here. But that's so small. I don't think I'm gonna bother. It's it's. I mean, it's like a quarter of an inch is all, and it's not, it's no big deal. So I think I'm just going to let that be. Um, and so the, you know, the top, um, on the on the top side, the housing that I built then screws in to the beams, you know, from the top and, and you know, squishes it together. And that's what seals that um, with the uh, construction adhesive and, and whatnot. So... Uh, yeah, anyway, that's that's the fan and the roof. And um, like I said, from the inside, there's just this nice, uh, soft, sort of velvety um, headliner material. Um, but that's it. That's the roof. The roof is done now. I'm going to go back outside here now that it's up. And um, back off here. You can see now the fan is up. The fan, uh, roof is up there. And it's very tall, so and that's not even all the way up. It goes up another five inches or something uh, more than that. So uh, anyway, that's my roof. Uh, and again, I just got to finish doing all this like trim, and that's all the next thing I do. I'll just put all the rest of my trim on, and then after that, I'm gonna put the windows in. That's probably a day project. Four windows will be pretty easy, and it's gonna take me several days to build the doors. So uh, I'll do the windows first, and then the next big project will be putting the doors on and then it'll be completely sealed in um, but as it is right now the um, uh, the roof is done um, I there's gonna be an awning by the way I'm a, there's gonna be an awning along here so I didn't I wasn't too crazy careful about putting the edge of the um, those um, top beams down super tight I'm gonna clamp those down a little tighter right now I'm letting the um, they're, they're up a little bit I, I haven't tightened them super down because I want the construction adhesive to set uh, against and, and seal to the canvas and then once it's sealed to the canvas I'll, I'll tighten those uh, edge screws down a little tighter and that'll help to actually pull the canvas up just a little bit um, and I put as you can see I put five uh, well you can't really see because it's, <laughs> it's up really tall uh, let me back up here on this side uh, now the sun yeah the sun's really bright um Okay, so there's, what is it, seven, I guess seven beams I put across there, one on each end and then five in the middle. I didn't put, you know, I could have put one more where the front of the cabinet, uh, whoops, let me point to the right place here, for the front of the cabinet is right there on each end, um, but I thought seven was probably plenty good, and I'm going to run some... Um, stringer beams um, over the top of those to mount my solar panels on uh, but again that's that's later so uh, for now that's um, that's my roof being complete if it rains and stuff I don't have to worry about it now uh, which is good uh, it's not going to rain anytime soon probably because it's still 100 and whatever degrees but that's um, that's the roof project so I just wanted to give you an update on where I am uh, with that and next time I'll have some windows and maybe some doors built. Um, I've still got some stuff to do inside. Uh, a lot of stuff to do actually inside, but I'll do the windows and doors first before I start working on the, um, the inside details. So um, I will do another video once I get windows and, and maybe the door done. So I will talk to you next time.